Hi everyone! Because the book that we're sending out in our June box is a science fiction story and an awesome one, I thought I would do a video recommending some of my favorite science fiction and dystopian novels to you. So I thought I'd structure this video a little bit differently than we normally do, and I'm going to be first recommending you some classic science fiction, um, old stuff like Dune and The Time Machine, and I'm also going to be recommending you some adult science fiction, um, and these are books that I think any people of any age can enjoy, but they are in the adult age range, and then of course I'm going to get through a big list of YA titles. I have a lot of books to get through today, so let's just get right into it. All right, so the first book I'm going to talk about, and these are going to be classic books, and I'm going to go go big or go home with this one, and I'm talking about Dune by Frank Herbert. Dune is arguably one of the most popular science fiction books of all time and has been adapted for film and various other mediums as well, and when I picked it up earlier this year, I was surprised by how incredibly readable it was, because it looks really daunting, like, it's massive. Um, and I was also daunted by the fact that I wasn't going to understand what was happening, because this book is very political, um, it takes place on different planets, there's lots of different things going on, but even midway through I was surprised, I was like, wow, I've already read 300 pages, this book is really good, and it had me just captured me and wanted to keep me in this world. And I know there are a ton of other books by Frank Herbert that take place. I'm not sure if it's a series or just in this world, but I'm definitely interested in picking them up. And if you're intimidated by this size, I'd say give it a go anyways, because I was very surprised by this. Next up, I have The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. We actually sent out this version of the book in our February 2016 sci-fi love box, and that's the reason I picked this up. Um, unlike Dune, this is a short little book, and I'm pretty sure it was the first time travel book ever written, as far as I'm aware. Um, again, this one is really quick to get through because of the length. I think it's about 150 pages long. Um, the readability is a bit harder. This definitely reads like a classic, but it's very interesting to go back and see all the cultural references that we got from this book. Next, I have The Giver by Lois Lowry. Now, I think this could also be in my YA category, but I definitely think it's a classic in the dystopian genre. Um, I only read this book last year and was so surprised at how wonderful it was. Um, it definitely, as an adult, I really still appreciated this dystopian story. Um, it was very creepy and the world is very um, jarring in a way, but I think the story itself really has a wonderful message and I recommend you picking it up. And of course, I have Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite classics. I think most people have probably picked this one up, but if not, again, I recommend it. It's a short book. You can get through it fast. Um, and obviously everybody knows the premise of this book in a world where firefighters, instead of putting out fires, they start them and burn novels. This book definitely gives us a valuable look at a dystopian society that we don't want, and it's a... Uh, I think everybody can take something from this one. And the final classic I'm going to talk about is one of my all-time favorite books, and that is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, and this is a trilogy in four parts. I first read this book way back when I was in high school, and we had like a kind of silent reading time in class, and I had to stop reading this book because I kept bursting into laughter in the middle of class. It's just so delightful, it's so funny, if you like English humor, humor especially, you'll definitely love this book. It's such a silly novel, and I really have nothing bad to say about it, it's just a lot of fun to read. Alright, so now I'm going to get into some adult fiction for you. The first book I'm going to talk about is one of the first adult science fiction books I ever read. That is The Wind Up Girl by Paolo Bakigalupi. So this book takes place in the future in Thailand, in a world in which food has become currency, so uh, calories is what it's actually called, and it follows a man who scours the street for new or extinct food that he can use for money. It also follows a girl named Emiko, who is a wind-up girl who is um, kind of like an android and made to perform. Um, and I think the most interesting thing about this novel is pretty much all of the characters in it are awful humans. Like, they're really just terrible people, even, even our protagonist. And the only character in this book that has any redeeming qualities is Emiko, who's not actually human. So I thought that was a very interesting take, and I really appreciated reading this book. Next up, I actually have a book of short stories, and this is Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang. Um, one of the stories in here is called Story of Your Life, and that is actually what the movie Arrival was based on. This, All of the stories in here are really interesting science fiction tales that are uh, a bit scary, um, which I think science fiction does really well for us. It again, and I think this happens quite a lot in adult science fiction, it really explores humanity in all of the stories and what that means. Next up, I have Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, this is a wonderful book, and I actually saw the movie of this 
first and it's a movie I absolutely adore and I think if you're going for adaptations it's probably one of the best I've ever seen. Um, and although this is a dystopian novel, it really reads like literary fiction. The writing is beautiful and the science fiction elements are subtle and just heartbreaking, but the story is just so wonderful. If you've seen the movie and like the movie, I def definitely recommend taking the time to read the book as well. And another book that was recently turned into movie, The Martian by Andy Weir. Now, I think for all of the books on this list of science fiction, this is the one more heavy on the science. Um, everybody, I think most people know the story of this book about a man who gets stranded on Mars. Um, and I am not incredibly scientific, like I didn't go to college for science or anything like that, but I didn't find all the science references in this book to be jarring. I thought it was very well explained and the humor in this book is perfect. So I don't be scared of all the scientific references in here because I think anybody can appreciate this. Next up, I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Again, this is a book that is so beautifully written that at times you kind of forget that it's science fiction and the premise of this book is so funny to me. It's, it follows a group of Shakespeare actors after the end of the world. <laughs> So it's kind of like um, them wandering around post-apocalyptic Canada and America and everything that ensues from there as so many people have died and it's just a really interesting take and it's also humorous and the writing in here is just, like I still think about this book after months, months after having read it, it's, it's really wonderful. For the last adult fiction books I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. And I think this is a good bridge into the YA because this could definitely be considered a YA book as well. This book is so much fun and that takes place in a dystopian future in which most people kind of live in a virtual reality and it's just packed full of 80s pop culture references and video games and the characters are lovely and it's just a really great adventure story that I actually want to reread re very soon. Now for the YA books, I'm gonna start with a really weird one, and that is Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith. I think this book is pretty divisive in who loves it and who hates it, and I totally understand that because it's very weird and takes place in a world in which two boys accidentally unleash a, like, horde of giant praying mantises. Not grasshoppers, as you would think. Um, <laughs> it's very bizarre, it's hypersexual, and just kind of twists your mind a little, but I am in the camp of really loving it, but I wouldn't be surprised if half of you didn't like this one. But I think it's very interesting and something definitely unlike anything else you'll ever read. Next, I have How I Live Now by Mig Rossoff. Now, when I picked up this book, I actually didn't know it was science fiction. I kind of it only came to me in the latter half of the book. I was like, oh, this is not set in a contemporary setting. That's interesting. Um, but this takes place in England and follows a 15-year-old girl named Daisy and England is in wartime, um, but this is a fictional war and it's just a really interesting sci-fi survival story, but the writing is beautiful in it as well and it has some really interesting relationships and I think this book definitely deserves any hype it gets and the movie is really wonderful as well. Next up I have Reboot by Amy Tintera. Now this is a sci-fi duology that I don't think gets enough hype. Um, I read this a few years ago on recommendation from somebody in my local bookstore and absolutely flew through it. Um, this story follows people who die and then shortly, shortly after wake up again and when they wake up they're kind of stronger, more agile and less human. Um, so the cover of this book said, five years ago I died, 178 minutes later I woke up. And in this world, to be dead for 178 minutes is almost impossible. It's a very long and they never expect anybody to come back. But the longer you de you're dead, the stronger you are when you wake up. So this person is incredibly strong and she's um, just a very complicated character. And she's mentoring a person who had been only dead for 22 minutes. So he's pretty much just a regular human and it's kind of starts off with their like love-hate relationship and his weak status and it's just very interesting and it's only two books long and I think more people should read this one. Next I have The Lux Series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Now I by no means think this is like literary fiction at its finest. It is definitely Twilight with aliens. Like hundred <laughs> percent and it's like and I don't think that's a terrible thing like I really enjoyed reading these books but they are definitely like sci-fi candy. Like, the, <laughs> the first line on the back of this book is, there's an alien next door, and with his looming height and eerie green eyes, he's hot. <laughs> and it's like, ooh, kind of cringy, and the covers are like, don't bring this to public. <laughs> but it's, uh, 
It's really fun, and if you just want something like silly, I definitely recommend picking up this series. And the main character is actually a book blogger, so that's cool. Next up, I have Across the Universe by Beth Revis. If you've seen the movie Passengers, then you know the premise of this book, even though they're entirely unrelated. So this book follows a society that's been put on a spaceship um, and relocated to another planet, and this book takes place on that spaceship when some of the characters wake up early. It's definitely a fun and crazy science fiction ride with a swoon-worthy romance in it, as you can probably tell from this cover. I read this book a few years ago and really enjoy it, and I think it would still hold up today. Next, I have The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. Now, I read this book earlier this year and was so pleasantly surprised by how much I liked it. Um, it follows a diabolic who is a person who is created to protect another human. They're kind of like servants in a way, and in the story, this diabolic is sent in place of her human to act like her and in kind of like a royal court setting. Um, it's very ruthless, it's violent, um, there's really interesting relationships, and I was so just pleased by how much I like the story and I cannot wait for the next one to come out. Next, I have another book by Paolo Bacigalupi and that is Shipbreaker. This book actually won the Prince Award a few years ago and I can totally understand why because it is a dark and gritty and powerful story taking place in a dystopian future in America. A shipbreaker is somebody who scavenges old wrecks of ships for copper in order to sell for money and things like that. Um, and it kind of follows our one main character as he stumbles on his own ship that he can scavenge that nobody's seen before, but he has to make the decision of whether he will use it for the money or take care of the ship's one lone survivor. Um, and the story kind of takes off from there, and it's just a really gritty and interesting YA novel, and Paolo Bacigalupi writes wonderful science fiction, and I think this one's really accessible, and I would definitely check it out. Okay, I only have a couple left, and I can't not mention Legend by Marie Lu. This is probably my favorite dystopian trilogy. Um, I'm not going to talk about things like The Hunger Games and Divergent and Shatter Me and Delirium. There's so many um, YA dystopian trilogies out there, but this one's my fave. So at the beginning of this book, we follow June, who is like a brilliant um, member of high society in this broken dystopian America, and Day, who is kind of a street rat. Um, they're both brilliant and interesting characters, and they eventually cross paths in an unusual way and their story takes off from there. It's just love the writing in this book. It's so easy to get into and you just can't help but like root for these characters. So I also really like the just actively reading this book because in every single book in the series the books have different colors fonts in them for who's speaking and I think that was really interesting and just a fun addition to the story. And the final book I'm going to talk about because I feel like it's going to be relevant again very soon is The Darkest Minds by Alexander Brecken. I know they just finished shooting a movie for this book and I can't wait to see that movie because I did love this series when I read it a few years ago and I can't wait for more people to be able to pick this up. This book takes place in a society in America in which uh, most of the children have been killed off by a plague or some kind of disease and the survivors have been sent by the government to rehabilitation camps. It's quite dark and eerie and often the survivors in this world will get what is kind of like superpowers. Um, and it's very action-packed and adventurous and there's like lots of road tripping and a big cast of characters that you came to like love as a family together and I'm so happy this is getting turned into a movie. I can't wait to see it and I want more people to pick this up as well. All right, so that is just a small snippet of some of the sci-fi and dystopian books that I have read and enjoyed. Obviously there are so many awesome ones out there, so if you have any recommendations I didn't list, please let me know in the comments because I love to read more. If you want to get in on the awesome new sci-fi story that we're sending out in our June box, there is still a little bit of time to order, so I'll leave a link to our website below if you want to get in on that. And I think that's it for this video, guys. Please give it a like if you like these recommendation videos and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye!